very, very similar layout. You've got the ribbon at the top and you've got the file menu which is disabled and the the button with the three lines on it at the top for uh, exit and save so as i tap on the menu commands it shows you the ribbon if i tap on a cell what it does is it automatically brings up the um, keyboard if i tap and hold on a sheet name at the bottom and then let go it's the equivalent of doing a right click so you can delete a sheet you can rename a sheet you can even change the tab color of a sheet that didn't seem to work let me try that one again tab color I pick a colour. There we go, red. If I want a new sheet, just tap on there. There we go. It's probably easier with a stylus, but it's you know it's not too bad with a finger. Uh, plus the fact I have actually got it in a, a stand, um, so it was right down at the bottom of the of the screen. But going back to what I was showing you before, if I tap on a cell, it brings up the um, the, the keyboard. And it's a standard um, iPad keyboard, but you do have those extra uh, buttons there. The Control, Alt, Shift, Tab, the Function keys, and the arrow keys as well. And the arrow keys really do work. So I'm tapping those. It's an alternative way to move around the spreadsheet. And just bring the menu or, or take the, uh, the keyboard away. So let's close this file tap and hold there auto saves let's go back into my demo folder say my demo folder you can have different views if you actually click the home button then depends how many times you tap it it takes you back a step at a time but as you're navigating through folders you can see up here on this bar you've got like a breadcrumb trail and so you tap and it gives you a list of files and subfolders in that particular folder so you know it depends what view you want but uh, let's open the file called sales demo and I want to insert a row at the top so tap on the number one and choose insert that gives me a blank row let's have some headings so quarter one and now I'm going to see if I can get um, the autofill to work you've got to be really precise here hey there we go there we go right I want to write align those so if I go to the alignment tab and click on align right that writes align them and I now want to total so tap in that cell there and I want to total let's go to the formulas click on auto sum and just like the real Excel it assumes that I want to add up the figures above which I do so I'll just tap return and I get a total let's see if I can copy using drag and drop hey that worked first time so it's copied the formulas across as you would expect the real Excel to do. You can also create a chart. So let's select these cells here and go to insert and just didn't tap insert then. Come on, insert and chart. I'm going to go for a let's go for a 3d column chart click on OK let's clear that the keyboard and I have a chart and I should be able to move that chart around somewhere else on the spreadsheet there we go I could also click on move chart and move it into a sheet of its own
and there we have it. So it's in a totally separate sheet. If any of you have used um, Office 2010, Excel 2010, you'll probably be familiar with um, spark lines. So if I open this file here called Chocky, this is showing you um, different uh, chocolate bars than, and sales of different types of chocolate at different times of the year. So what I want to do is create spark lines, which are like mini charts. Think of them as mini charts that just give you a, a kind of overall view. So select the cell where I want the, the um, spark line to go. Go to insert, choose line. The data range where the spark line data is, tap on there, Let's move that out of the way, select the cells, the location of the uh, spark line chart is N2, which is the right cell, click on OK, OK, sure. I tapped in there. You've got to be ever so careful when you tap to so end to click OK. And there we have our spark line chart. And if I can increase the height of the row, it makes the chart even bigger. So, you know, it's great. You might think that it's a, you know, it's, it's a really cut down version of Office. It's, it's a gimmick. It's not. It contains a lot of features. Let me open another file. Remember, every time I tap that button above file, it auto saves. And uh, let me show you some of the data features. So if I open the file called tech spending, I can click in, um, in a cell in that block there. Let's just take this back to the top, scroll back to the top. Now I'm tapping all over the place. Tap once in there, clear that, and go to data. And filter. So I get my filter arrows just as you'd expect in Excel. And let's choose category. And I'm interested in, I've um, got to be careful here, I, th I did the equivalent of a right click there. I think I just held my finger a bit too long. So I get a list of all the categories so I'll say I'm only interested in all the sales for games. So tap on games, click OK, and it filters anything that's just games. OK, tap again on there. And let's have hardware. And there we go. So, you know, it really is like uh, like Excel itself. Let's clear that. So clear the filter, just tap in the cell, and you can even do things like uh, like subtotals. So let's go to um, not and why is subtotals grayed out? Is that because I've got the filter on? Probably. I was going to show you subtotals, but it's unavailable for some reason. OK, well, let me show you something else instead. Let me show you pivot tables. So we'll go to insert, go to pivot table. And just like Excel, it automatically detects where the data is. I'm going to put the resulting pivot table on a new sheet. So I'll tap on OK. And then I will say I want to see categories on the on the columns and I want to see um, purchased from or spent for will have on the rows and I want to see amount on the values. And there we have a pivot table. And if I want to swap them around, I can do so.
very, very powerful indeed.